I have to introduce our guest of honor. I only know a handful of black entrepreneurs. I'm not referring to the guys who are lucky. <laughs> because that is a skill too. <laughs> There's a lot of guys who are lucky. Um, and then there are those guys who are old enough to be our fathers who chose to be entrepreneurs at the deepest, darkest time of this country, who I have no idea what they dodged or how they even got to where they are today. And there were two that I wanted to hear. The other one is flying to Moscow with his jet. <laughs> he told me. This one was about to fly somewhere and I said, you, you, I, I'm not launching if you're not there. And he, he, he was happy to cancel his plans to be here. I'm not going to introduce him. I'm only going to tell you his name because you all have read something about him. What I asked him to do tonight is that whilst he wears too many hats, I don't want to hear about the other hats. I don't know about you. I know BBC. I don't want to hear about BBC. I don't want to hear about Pamot. It's a great story. I want to hear about Dalanzi. Yeah. So ladies and gentlemen, I yeah. present Dalanzi. And I'll finish the box and I'll go home. 
I'm going to first check the story about the internship. Then I went to uh, school, I went to Orlando High, uh, and there, I went with my friends, we started uh, selling newspapers here in Hilton at night. Now when you sell newspapers, they give you newspapers and you make your profit, and then, uh, and then you give them that money, but you got a, what you call a corner, the vendor store, we call it a corner, so we got a corner. So we were selling newspapers in Hilton during apartheid, uh, and uh, at that time, the, the movies were for white people, white people only. So we're selling to white folks. So again, when you're selling newspapers in the new world at night, uh, when you want to give yourself a, a bonus, uh, a bonus is a, not even a great change. Because selling newspapers <laughs> give, you, give you a lot of mathematical calculations very, very quick. So I, I know how much if you give me 10 and how much I'll give you. So you avoid. Uh, males that are together in the car. And then you give these papers the Sunday Times. When you see a male and a lady, you give them the Sunday Times, and then they change, uh, you give them, and then you see and say, hey, you should change me. But then they say, let's go. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they do it right now with me, but I saw newspapers. <laughs> You know, I'm with my wife, I know the trick. So, <laughs> but the interesting part was that uh, I'm in measures and acquisitions, but I did measures and acquisitions when I was in uh, uh, high school. What happens in the newspaper game? You find out that guys that are very good, they smile when they, they, when they try, they build a corner. What we used to say that they make a corner from the table and they finish that paper quick. When they finish that your speak, they come and buy your papers at a discount. So you don't make money. Now, I decided at that time that I must do a buyout. I want to buy a corner that's profitable and get somebody to run that corner for me. And then I bought these corners until I had 10 or 15 corners. Now, the problem there is that uh, you, you employ new youngsters because the corner is developed. Uh, and those youngsters, when they were a lot of cash, they disappear, we'll never see them. <laughs> so at that time, I employed the first white man in my life, a student at Vegas with an umbrella, to collect my money every 30 minutes from these youngsters. <laughs> now, in the time I called WEE, -E, it was white to conquer the I employed that youngster because he had free cash flow, but I employed him. And then the mistake that he did, he told other students <coughs> with Namreta that uh, he's, he's got free cash flow and because he's doing his job. So when he wanted to increase uh, the price, uh, and then I had some guys that were approaching me and they went at a, a lower price. <laughs> <laughs> then we quite passed that. Then, uh, then you, Ubonga said when you are in high school, they ask you what you want to be, and uh, uh, in my classroom, I mean, we're good in maths and science, and uh, there are eight doctors there, and uh, uh, a whole lot of other people. There's a story that I talk about, Tandy, who was uh, our classmate, Tandy Do. Uh, when we did Form 1, our principal said, uh, number one in June, we're going to go to Form 2. So we didn't think that there is going to beat us, mm -hmm. with due respect. You know, especially when it comes to medicine and science, you know. There's Andy, the chief of accountants. Clever boy, can calculate. But can it be us? <laughs> so, the point I was in the classroom of people that were not very much on the dark side. But then when it comes to uh, metric one, metric two, by the way, metric one, I bought myself uh, a Morris Minor. My first car is when I was a student. And I had my first car by being an engineer. And then my principal asked me to take the jerseys uh, during uh, 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 soccer on Wednesdays and the soccer and basketball games. And so he said I must take the jerseys to the grounds every Wednesday. He was doing that himself. I obliged as my principal. I took the jerseys and the uniform for ladies and baseball, but I gave my principal an invoice. <laughs> He said to me, I thought you were also going to the uh, soccer field because I was playing soccer. I mean, I was playing soccer with some people. I don't want to play drop. 
<laughs> I said, at least I said yes, but uh, I use petrol to go there. So, <laughs> the focus is creating wealth. You must never lose focus. You want to create wealth. It must be fun, you must be brave. So, I ask this question like, what do you want to be when you leave high school? And I gave them one answer. I said, I want to be a millionaire. Nice. And they said, what? Yeah, before being there, you must be a doctor, a lawyer. I said, I know what, I want to be known there. That's, that seems to be fun, you know. <laughs> but because you know, we're here inside in, in, in Jobek, and the open hammers at that time, they were talking about them and all that, and blah, 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 blah. So, fine, I pursued my career, and uh, I saw a gap. Uh, when you're in Sydney, you must follow your vision. We all got vision. One can put it in a, a, a different manner. He said, uh, there's an opportunity for all of us every day. But then the trick is to follow your vision. Opportunities are there all the time, even now. Now, uh, when the government uh, was not building houses for black people in the township, uh, myself and three, uh, two of my partners, I go to mention them, we decided uh, and this is another angle. Uh, internship is also about team. Uh, you can form team uh, with people like uh, thinking the same as you. And now, the times I give lectures at varsities, and I, I emphasize hunting in pets. And I'll tell you later, people forgot, you must ask me. I don't even know how much time I was giving you. I just came here. Just came here. <laughs> but, uh, th then we started building. Uh, Two rooms and garages. Now, I've never been in a, a, a school of. Uh, the fact that I was a bit lazy because I had two sisters before me, so uh, lazy with my hands. I couldn't uh, iron, I couldn't cook, I can't cook. Even now, uh, if my wife's not there, I don't want to put an egg there, then the fat is going to come. <laughs> so, I know I can't do it, I was spoiled. But I took a business in construction, can you imagine? Uh, the first business was in construction. We started construction, there was a gap, and we built two rooms and garages. But as engineers, must always look at other opportunities, diversify. Our brains can accommodate a lot of things. Uh, I moved from there, uh, and the, what was the most important thing is uh, <coughs> what I'm going to say now. You must develop a skill of borrowing money. Without marbles, you can't play a game. <laughs> Okay. A business by pleasure is a game of marbles. And uh, uh, you need a lot of marbles, by the way. You know, <laughs> those of us that come from the townships, we had uh, uh, you know, the, the round marbles, and the other ones is money. A guy that got a sack of marbles is playing with you with two of, uh, marbles. That guy is relaxed, he's gonna beat you. You know, and uh, he's also got an iron and all that. He's gonna beat you. <laughs> So, when you borrow money, you must borrow big. So that must not be beaten by the game of internship or business. Uh, we make a mistake by doing startup as entrepreneur and say, I will start, start small and I will grow. Guys, it's dangerous. Uh, come with a big plan and let's develop. I'm happy this website is going to assist you guys uh, of how to get marbles. That going to help you. How to have a cash flow projection. This is the most wonderful thing. So I'm prepared, I mean, to, to, to assist and share my experiences even further so that it must be there. You must not go to the trap that I went through. But then I was very brave. You also need to be brave to enter there. Uh, I heard one guy was, uh, he says he's 35 years old. Uh, I said the company 1979. I think some of you were not born there and he's still surviving until today. But then the, the first secret, I followed a lot of marbles, and uh, I'll tell you, one time I went to our bank manager in Chablani, we were doing a development in Toxin in Section 3, a huge development from infrastructure, bank services, and all that. At that time, I had a lot of engineers that have employed, and then uh, I trained them. Of course, I also went for some uh, Courses, uh, business management, you, you, you go to the sums we know, the school, you know, to. Uh, 
this is not extremely complicated, guys. It's arithmetic. You subtract, you divide. And you minus. I think all of us know that. The ladies, they play stop fair. They do that. Seriously, today the money is coming to you. You add 11, 10 runs are coming to you. That is business. And then, of course, must know a percentage. Once you know those things, I'm telling you, all of us can be great in Shaklias. So I bought uh, money and I wanted to get into a big development. So I went to my bank manager in Soweto. I didn't even know that this man, Alawrence, was at that time was about 100,000. So he couldn't borrow anything more than 100,000. I wanted 6.5 million. So I went to him. I said, hello. Uh, you know, I want to borrow 6.5 million. <laughs> I want to get involved in a big consortium with stocks and stocks. And uh, in partnership, you must promote yourself. If you stand at, at the, uh, a lower league, when you get a gap to the first division to play with Chief and Peter, take that opportunity. In partnership, it's not like schooling that you must start at great north. That game, once you think fast and quick, you get into a big league very quick. And once you're in a big league, then you get respect and things become easy. So I went to Harold, I said I want this money. And Harold said, no, 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 you cannot give me uh, that money. It's too much, it's going to be fired. But I didn't know that it's not allowed not to borrow more than 100,000. So then I, immediately I said to him, I was with a guy called Oprumkwena. Oprumkwena, he was, uh, we grew up together, he was the president of this Mandela. He was next to me. He was not going to do this project together. So I said to him, let me talk to Standard Bank uh, Chief Executive Officer. He said, no, not in my office. I said, you won't know. It's a, it's, it's a telephone. You know, like this thing that you're using. Right? I said, you won't know I'm here. I forced him, and then he dialed the number, and uh, I got Jaco uh, Mare, uh, who was an investment banker at that time. And imagine those days, uh, it was during apartheid. You never had sectaries who were uh, black. Uh, all the sectaries for these guys were white. Today, at least, we got uh, our sisters there. Uh, from, <laughs> from, from the country, from the world. Uh, so it's easy. Now, I called uh, this lady. Uh, I said, I'm now and I'd like to meet uh, Jaco Mare. Uh, he said, what time? I said, the time was 10 o'clock when I called it. I said, by lunch time. He said, where are you? I said, I'm in Soweto. He said, no, these people are booked a year in advance. <laughs> because it had my accent. So I said to her, uh, just tell, name dropping words. I said, just tell him that the president of this Mandela wants to talk to him. That lady, I think she had the name Mandela. Mandela was sitting in jail. And I was with him, Aubrey. I saw Aubrey shaking next to me. But I said, <laughs> she said, oh, I'll see what I can do. Don't drop the phone. So you must be able to open doors. Or you must think on your feet. She went away, came back. She said to me, OK, can we be at 4 o'clock? I said, yes. Now, you can imagine. She said, this people have put a year in advance. Now I've got a four o'clock appointment. I've opened the door, I went to uh, a jaco. Our balance sheet, uh, and I will tell you, our balance sheet joined the week was about 30,000. <laughs> <laughs> so not all of my balance sheet. So I was there, and uh, I mean, those days, getting that office, uh, uh, she was, was a huge office for one person, and those days people were smoking in the offices, and I didn't smoke, but they offered the consulate, I didn't know where to take it, and, was, and I just said, if I start now, I'm going to cough. They didn't want to take it. So then I said, how can I help you? I, I, I said to him, you know, I, I'm looking to, uh, for 6.5 million, and there's a big project, and, and blah, blah, blah. And uh, look, this guy was impressed. And he says, ask me, uh, you know, banker's question, how much do you think you're worth? Uh, I said, me, personally, I think about 20,000. Uh, <laughs> and my other friends uh, combined it. <laughs> I said, how do 
money to our money. Said, no, the cash flow. We will have the cash flow. We, 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 we pay you and I'll make profit and all that. So Jacob decided, I opened the door and I was with him. I was able to convince him that this is a good thing for the country and all that. So he borrowed me that money. He told my bank that. I, I said to him, by the by, he said, when bank said Chablani, and I said that from there, he said, no, but that guy, uh, he cannot borrow more than 100,000. But he never told me because he was also a king clip, you know, that guy. <laughs> <laughs> so he told me that he gave that man 6.5 million and the condition, so I had this money. Two weeks after that, I get another opportunity of building a school here in Fairhawk. And I, I, I need to have about 3 million rents for the school. So I said, do I need this one? I said, no. I said, where do I go? I said, Barclays Bank. <laughs> so I went and managed to get Chris Paul. Now, you must open doors when you're in Sopnia. Chris Paul used to come to Soweto. I, did, I grew up in all the West. Uh, so my little family and all that, I'm, I'm part of that. They know me. So I went to uh, Maui. I said, man. Yeah. And she knows me, I'm a capitalist. They don't all know me, we don't know time. They know that I love money. I love money. They don't hide about, they don't hide this thing of uh, loving money and wear a red t shirt to a communist, but you like it. You must like it, it will also follow you. So, I, I said to uh, Robert Ma, I want to see Chris Paul. He said, what, what do you want? I said, I shocked it. I said, I've just borrowed six million. I want another three million. Ah! <laughs> I know that money. Ooh. <laughs> and then he called Dr. Montrane. Uh, Montrane said, Come, uh, let him go and try. But Montrane said, Pandawa, how do you expect? You owe him one bed. I said, Doctor, please give me a chance. I'm going to talk. So I went there. Uh, no, no, I don't know whether this what they did was uh, uh, true or what, but they said, come on Thursday, we must talk to Lusaka. You know what you are doing So I talked to Lusaka. So I came uh, for my results. I mean, I wanted positive results. And she knows me, I want positive results. And again, confidence is very, very important. Apartheid killed confidence among a lot of people. So confidence is important. So even though I went to win it, well, whatever Lusaka said, I wanted my money uh, to do what I wanted to do. So I came in there, and then she said, yes, Lusaka said, after our freedom, we need to said, yes. I said, yeah, that's good, then we must start now. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to Chris, and I told Chris Paul that uh, I owe Stella back 4.6, 6.5 million. I need 3 million for the school. We've been given the project by Anglo American. And uh, you know what? These people, they love great people. As long as you must have a way of hitting it from the top at times. Because when you go to your peer group, they tell you that section four of act number 56 in this bed says, nobody with a 20 million balance sheet can get six million. But the guys who are there, who are running this thing, who believe in champions, they open the doors. So I got this money and then I really uh, got overdraft and I created a lot of wealth. I did other things and uh, as a dreamer, uh, towards 90s, 94, I went to America. I said the sanctions are going to be uplifted. I solicited a, 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 a deal for uh, Nike McDonald's, but I wanted to have a distribution license in Southern Africa. So my brain was not only in South Africa. Uh, Americans gave me Nike. Those guys who are happy right now with their kids chiefs, it's me that brought this <laughs> <laughs> you see, you can win the league of the Indians now. <laughs> but I brought Nike and uh, I did what I call WEE. I sponsored uh, the Springboks where they were white, that's white from California after winning the World Cup and then sponsored a lot of teams. Uh, we built a stadium, those that know Chris Honey, a stadium in Orange Farm uh, was built by me as an engineer. Uh, and then we named it Chris Honey because we don't want to name drop. <laughs> <laughs> so now, as an engineer, you do big things. 
Now, you, you move from uh, overdraft, from borrowing the money from the bank, to having more money at the bank. The bank asked me to speak when they were promoting Steam Shabalaba. Maybe some of you were there or not there. So I created a history that I used to owe the bank, but the bank owes me now. <laughs> <laughs> it means I want more money in the bank. You see, I can call the bank and say, I will show my money sink. <laughs> <laughs> now, the dream moved from being a millionaire to a multi-millionaire. And the dream moved from being a multi-millionaire in rents to a multi-millionaire in all currencies. Amen. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's where I am now. <laughs> He gave you this 50 rand. And he said this 50 rand will remain 50 rand. Because he's still a local player. He's <laughs> <laughs> not playing the international game. So as a channel, he must play it over. This 50 rand between Monday and Tuesday, it will reduce the value. <laughs> international. So you have to play the global arena. I bought Nike from zero to number one in the country. In Southern Africa, put more, uh, Nike Mauritius, Nike Angola, and all that, and then sold it back to them. <laughs> when you're in Japan, you must also have an exit. Once you buy something, you must know the door of getting out. Some of the things, you don't have to be sentimental until forever. You find yourself in trouble. You must grow things, stick to those things forever, but if there's a chance of getting a, a lot of money, do it. I mean, I did it and people thought I'm crazy, but they didn't know that I would free cash flow. I, I got this situation because it was, they gave us 90 shares and they paid us. So you get into a situation where your money, you like to say, your wealth, the money follows you. Like now, I'm sitting here. In New York Stock Exchange, I'm starting now. <laughs> <laughs> so, my dollars might be more than before. Maybe they'll be increased. <laughs> I made this piece. <laughs> so, that's being playing in the global arena. It, it is true that money does work for yourself. I mean, when you are in, in that league, on a serious note, you know, uh, he, and they said there's someone that wanted to call here, yeah, uh, and, uh, and that person took his plane to somewhere, and, and, and all that says, yes, is it that leak where money follows you? Then, when they thought that Nike was uh, a big thing, uh, 1996, uh, we did the biggest NPO in the country. Then the first time that happened, not even white folks did, did an NPO. It was a food call, 1.7 billion. Now, you can imagine I was borrowing, uh, and I'll tell you, uh, at one time when Nike was doing, uh, I, 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 I needed to grow this thing. I, I, I went on the banks in South Africa, I went about 200 million, I couldn't get money. And then I went to uh, America, and City Bank, uh, with the absence of Nike, because I was in a big league, uh, <laughs> they said to me, how much do you want? That guy, had, you know, he sat with me for, for three minutes. I'm not, I'm not lying. So I said that uh, uh, 200 million there. He said, that's all. She was. You know? I said, wow. Oh, I should have, should have asked for more. <laughs> but he said, fine, you go to South Africa. What that call it It's far from here. Nike and office. So I went there and I got uh, money for, to expand Nike. Now, what did that do to me? It, 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 it unlock my brain that we are in a global stage. Uh, if that brain doesn't give me, I can go elsewhere. So then I was supposed to do this LPO, LPO. We ran the market in South Africa, we couldn't get money. So I went to APN Amro uh, in Holland. I said, this is deal, is a food deal and all that. And APN Amro brought me the money. And we did with the economic stake, 
And by the time, when you are in business, you must also seriously take control. Oh, let's see that's not. I don't want to misquote that BD is okay, but 2% or 3% is uh, okay when your money is in storage change. The guys that are growing your money in storage change that are still under pressure in terms of managing your money. But if you are in some deals there, uh, having a small percentage is a problem. So control is also important. You must understand that and must know that. If you don't get control by yourself, get other partners and then co control a business with them. Like our business startup, they are in control. <laughs> <laughs> they are in control. So I borrowed that 1.3, kilo. It was headline news. I was in five pages, and uh, wow, exciting, and uh, and all that. Uh, hero. When I go to the township uh, where I grew up, otherwise people will say, wow, this guy. But then, that if I. I, I was sticking with Nike. I was not going to be uh, a chairperson and an owner of such a big business. Our turnover started from about four billion, and uh, we sold it at at seven billion. And the profit will be like the EBITDA, something like four hundred million, three hundred, six hundred million, seven hundred million. That's a nice number. So must must say, you know, we are in business. Must have telephone numbers. You know? <laughs> Girls, when you start coaching girls, uh, if you ask them where do you live, those clever ones will not say uh, 4250. They'll give you a telephone number 5260568. Then you won't be knowing that number. You get confused. But then it's nice, and then you know that that lady is chicken. She's a, she's a big thinker. She actually doesn't want you. And it's not the guy. She's giving this number. So playing with those big numbers, guys, I'm telling you, uh, I, I can give you one example. Uh, and I, I think I have to give you this example uh, about some of those big numbers that we all know here. Yeah. Uh, it, it, uh, uh, I was asked by President Bill Clinton to address interveners uh, in America. But he gave me a lousy topic. He says I must talk about poverty alleviation <laughs> in Africa. <laughs> How can we conquer that? Now, we conquer poverty alleviation by creating interveners. So I looked back to him. I said, I don't talk about negative terms. I cannot take his topic. And uh, he said I must give the topic. I said, I'll talk about wealth creation. That was my topic. So he said to me, there's never anything to somebody asking to do something that uh, foundation and that person refused. But I said, I don't, if this topic, I'm not going to come in there. So he said, you want to see me after my talk. So I went there, I spoke and all that, and uh, talked about wealth creation. Uh, and uh, once you want to create wealth, you'll always create wealth. But at the end of the day, he gave me the time where to meet, and I knew that hotel. But he was a Methodist priest, that guy, uh, President uh, 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 Clinton. So when he started talking, he never stops. <laughs> but it's true, he was a Methodist priest. <laughs> so he comes out, and I'm standing there, and I look at my time. He forgot about me. He was talking, and men were starting to cry, you know. And when did men cry? Not ladies, this piece will go forever. <laughs> so as I was standing, I turned to go away. I said, hey, this man will correspond. And then as I was telling Patrice Mutipe was uh, behind me. So he said, hey, what's the car? I said, yes, uh, how are you? He said, why is I said, hey, you know, he said, why to see me? I said, I must stay in this corner. But uh, uh, he's kitchen now. <laughs> now, you know, money talks, guys, on a serious note. Patrice said to me, let's stand there. As soon as he sees him, he's going to stop what he's doing. And truly, <laughs> <laughs> when he did this, he saw Patrice, he pushed everybody, he came to us. 
as a then Ignat Petris. Uh, now, the difference between me and Petris <laughs> is a is a multi in all currencies. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what I mean. You know, in all currencies, you see. So I'm in a second league division. <laughs> So that's why I've got to be one, you know. It's not too late uh, to do that. Uh, don't need to start it. But you see the power, and he did that, and Petit said, this is a man, uh, and he said, oh, well creation, hey, I am it was good. But I'm just highlighting uh, that there are a lot of benefits when we have reached a certain level. Uh, a lot of things become cheap for you, but you must work for it and enjoy it. And uh, but proudly, uh, right now, there are two businesses uh, that uh, I was inducted as a world champion in the world of trade in France. Uh, Patrice is there, and a lot of people are there, and I also charge world champions. I was supposed to charge uh, next week, but then, <coughs> just to inform you, I, I got an award in New York for helping education in Africa, building schools there in, the, in, the, in South Africa and all that. So they're going to honor me. So that's why I'm not going to charge the interveners. I, I love to charge the interveners, but it's also a nice honor. I've got a lot of honors as a business person. It's also nice uh, to get an honor of saying you have a social heart. <laughs> <laughs> and I can wear my red t-shirt. <laughs> uh, Two things that I'm going to tell you and then close talking, uh, my, uh, stop my uh, talking. When I was judging World in there are two things that were extremely exciting to me one time. You get a lot of documents you must read uh, in this document. And guys have made amazing, uh, in Shabnir, starting from nothing, uh, they created a lot of world big companies. But this, was, this one which was really interesting. Uh, a hairdresser became a blogger, a hair salon, person at hair salon. And at times I talked to MBA graduate at the university, I said, can you be a blogger with us? He said, no. Now, I judge one, a Frenchman. And this guy, I won't uh, bore you with how he did it. But this guy is got a, a salon with partners in every city in the world. So the numbers, his team is ringing 24-7. You know, like when I was at food court, uh, when I was here, the Japanese were eating my fish. When I was talking here, this is the morning, because we first bought abalone and fish, and also uh, uh, the Americans were buying certain things from us. Now, this chap did that, and he became a billionaire. I judged that person, I met him. Another one that was of interest was a guy uh, who is in that uh, business that makes people live longer, uh, like a cow's business. People, he's saying if you laugh, you live long. <laughs> That's another one, again, that I, I, I judge from America. Uh, also a multi-millionaire in all currencies. And uh, I told him later on when I came in, I said to him, uh, you know, I want to see a billionaire in him. I challenged him and I told him, I've seen people in the same game, and uh, if those people that are playing the same game with him, they've achieved so much, he can achieve it. So he told me, yes, I'll go back to Kronstadt, my hometown, and get some more people support them. <laughs> I said, no, go and play international. <laughs> so I'm just giving you two things, of uh, two examples, that you, once you, 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 you are dedicated of creating wealth for yourself, uh, you can make those uh, millions and, and be happy. Because once you've done that, and of course, there's something that's very, very important. You must also rise with uh, your people. That's why uh, today I'm so happy to see uh, Angela opening this because it's going to rise with our people. Uh, our own company, our tea lady, uh, she's a shareholder. Our tea lady driver, 320 PMW. <laughs> You rise with the people, she gets a dividend and all that. And this is my passion. And I'm saying I'm going to also, whenever he needs me to, I'm going to come and at no charge because, uh, <laughs> yes, at no charge. I've got the money. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank <laughs> you.